Hello and welcome to AI Live. I'm Eve Vincent Martinez. Well, I hope you're ready for your close-up today because our guest is an accomplished portrait photographer. He's photographed many celebrities with a creative approach that separates him from all other photographers. Please welcome Miles Pettengill to AI Live. Hey, Miles. Hello. How Hi, are Vincent. you, sir? Thank you. Wonderful to be here. I'm well today. Thank you. How are you? I'm great, man. Thank you so much for joining us on AI Live today. So, um, so Miles, you know what? My understanding is you are living by coastal these days, east and west coast. So you are an L an LA based photographer, but you're also yeah. keeping a residence now in North Carolina. Is that right? In indeed, yeah. I've been based in Los Angeles for 15 years. Um, but I'm trying something completely new in a, in a wonderful place uh, called the Penland School of Craft in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. My partner is a resident artist here, Ellie Richards. She's um, a resident artist in wood and sculpture. And um, so, yeah, I've switched gears, but I've built myself a studio on the East Coast as well. And, um, you know, got a Toyota Tacoma to fit right in and uh, mobile over here. Excited. Well, I love that, and it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how this influences your work because you know most of us have an idea of, of LA. Either we've been to LA or we think of LA as, as being a certain way. But now you're at Penland School in North Carolina, which is completely different <laughs> geographically and just in every way. So. You know, it's, and it's also really a magical creative space. I mean, super creative space. So good for you. Thank you. I'm, I'm so excited about it. I mean, to be honest, like when I look back at my body of work, it is essentially, I shoot artists. And um, this school has no shortage of artists. Um, you know, uh, typically a lot of my work is photographing, you know, musicians and um, theatrical actors uh, in Los Angeles. That's sort of my bread and butter. However, I think there's a way that I can make that work also here. And frankly, like the change in climate is so welcome. Like um, <laughs> seeing the mist yeah. run through the mountains, like that doesn't exist. There's no water in the air in Los Angeles. So I'm yeah. um, really enjoying that change of pace for sure. Yeah, well, you are living through your through your lens, through your photographer's eye. And, you know, Miles, when I read up on your bio and your resume, there's something that, that, that resonated with me. So myself, actually, this AI Live team, you know, we are educators. We are with the Art Institutes. And something that I love about you is that you began photography in high school, and this interest and love was passion. Uh, or, or sparked, I should say, by your teacher. So let's let's give that teacher a plug. Tell us about yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. He does still teach photography. Um, he's now in Florida, I believe. His name's Jesse Myers. And I think we can all, as artists, um, you know, hearken back to that first teacher that kind of gave you a creative license and, like, freedom and the comfort to explore. And he was that person. Um, Jesse, it was his first year of teaching uh, ever in photography, and he taught me at Germantown Friends School in Philadelphia, where I went K through 12. Um, and, you know, he, he gave us broad assignments, um, photograph a loved one. Um, you know, he I once said, you know, photograph a rope. Um, uh, and he gave me a key to the dark room and he gave me the freedom to explore in photography. So, you know, I still to this day kind of look for my teachers in life um, beyond education. I think it's so important to find a mentor and find the people that can, you know, creatively advise you as you move forward in career. And um, Jesse started all that for me, but he also helped me meet my first mentor in Los Angeles, Robert Seabury, um, who's uh, like family to me and really taught me the ropes. I mean, I didn't know what a C-stand or an Apple box was when I moved to Los Angeles, and now I own a bunch of each. So, um, yeah. you know, teachers, love them. Yeah. 
Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Myers, right? <laughs> yes, uh, Jesse Myers. Let's, right? Let's discuss your aesthetic approach. That is something that I found so interesting and so unique in some of your portraits. And if you could really talk to us, not just about your personal approach, but I think one of the things that students are trying to learn, trying to accomplish, achieve, it could take years, whether you're in film or video, photography, fashion, culinary, you know, what is your style? What is your approach? Uh, and you clearly have a vision. I can look at your work and know it's yours. So if Thank you could you. address all of that. <laughs> that I mean, would be that's great the highest knowledge. of accomplishment. Um, and, and I really appreciate you saying that because it's sort of what I've tried. I think it's what any photographer tries to do um, is to create a body of work where someone might say, oh, that looks like an original Miles Petty book. That looks um, like, like an Irving Penn. You know, we knew what photos were his, Avagon. Um, we, yeah. we all, I think, aspire to having that sort of coherence. Um, so anyway, uh, I appreciate you saying that. And it's, I think it's a constant, um, a constant education to, you know, maintain that. I think one of the things that, um, that, that sort of keeps my work coherent is a focus on like, beautiful light. Um, I studied light. My, my grad school was in photo assisting. I got very lucky to assist many masters, um, many of whom were out of New York, but would shoot a lot in LA. And so I studied how they lit and I studied how um, you could, you know, make somebody look their best. Um, and, you know, whether it's a beauty dish or an octobank or um, you know, Kino flows, like lighting is so important to me. Um, and then photographer, of course, because that's the nature of the, um, the discipline. But um, people in particular, um, it's, there's a certain type of light, I think, that you need to do. And the other thing that really, I think, keeps my work together is um, I shoot through a lot of translucent materials, including glass and um, plastics. Um, and, you know, I try to use um, materials that have optical clarity um, and color washes. And I, I really like to embrace reflections in my work, um, physical reflections. And so, um, you know, anything that you see that looks like, oh, maybe that was composited, maybe that was multiple exposures, um, it wasn't. It's just um, some uh, material that I use in front of the lens. And for me, it, it helps me, it helps give it like a feel. Um, it helps give almost like a filmic, you know, back, back in the darkroom days, like having something feel more tangible as opposed to digital, um, which I do almost exclusively shoot as digital. But I add things in front of the lens to try and give it some heart. Yeah. So let me ask you then, how do you maintain your creative freedom, specifically with editorial assignments. I mean, I'm looking right now, I mean, you've got, you know, Jake and Maggie Gyllenhaal, you've, you've photographed John Legend, I mean, you've got a lot of celebrities, you've got a lot of commercial jobs, but still, I can tell, like, there was this one picture I just saw of Jack Black, it was clearly <laughs> your image, it had your touch. So, Thank you. it would really help, oh, you're welcome. Uh, it would really help our students, or uh, uh, really the viewer, um, to know how do you do that? How do you, you know, stay true to yourself and still comply with editorial assignments? Or do you get hired yeah. because people see your work and that's what they want? You know, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think that actually uh, it's in editorial assignments that I experience the most freedom. Commercial work is far more um, constrained um, for obvious reasons, but editorially I've been lucky to work with some photo editors and magazine editors who basically just trust me to go and do something. So, you know, recently I got the assignment to photograph Jermaine Fowler, um, he is in the new coming to America. Um, he's a comedian. He's so talented. And um, 
they called me up and said, you know, shoot Jermaine Fowler. And I'm like, all right. And so I was like, what do I want to do? I like horses and I know where I like to ride them in LA. So I rented two horses and uh, we went up into the mountains um, and um, lo- got really lucky with the light, um, which was planned too. But um, yeah, no equipment, just me and him, no makeup, no hair, no wardrobe. It was during COVID. We were masked up until we were out mm-hmm. there on the horses and separate. And, um, yeah. you know, so I had a lot of freedom in that assignment. And I think that um, I'm lucky to have some relationships with some editors that, that know me well enough to say, okay, he's going to take this person and put them underwater in a dark pool. And we're going to have some incredible images of this person, that kind of a thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I'm lucky to have so, that trust. So, and and I, think, I think trust is like a really important part of the whole thing. Um, you know, that trust trickles down from an editor to a photographer and, and through to the subject. And you know, one of the ways that I try to keep the subject engaged is like I welcome accidents. I welcome stumbles, literal and physical and metaphysical. You know, if we mess up, like that's part of humanity. You know, good music incorporates, um, you know, missteps and and learns and builds on them. I like to do that. That's how I like to approach people in in a portrait session. But, you know, uh, Miles, you just said that you're lucky to have that trust, but you're being modest. You've worked for that trust. You've earned that trust. So if we can take it back before that trust (laughs) Uh, had been created. So I'm thinking about our viewers that, well, you know, when are they going to call me? You know, who's they? And when right. are, when do I get to that point? So can you talk a little bit about your career path? How did you get to where you are now, where you are photographing these big names? You are getting these editorial and commercial assignments. Yeah, um, uh, it's, it's, it does not happen overnight. I think that's one of the most important things to impart to anyone um, getting into it. You know, uh, it reminds me, like I thought when I photographed John Legend, which was a few years back at this point, I thought, okay, this is going to be the assignment that like takes me over into, onto a new level. Um, and, you know, that's just not how it works. Um, that's an additional um you know, marker of success, but you you have to do it each shoot, you know, each client, um, each opportunity builds on the next one. Uh, but it doesn't, it's not like there's a windfall moment, um, in my, in my mind. So anyway, um, when I started out, I worked as a, um, photo researcher first in college at a magazine and I met an Uh, a magazine editor that I still work really closely with today. Um, So I think the takeaway there is like, you know, um, cherish your relationships and um, know that that person that you're, you know, interning with, um, that person that you're working in a restaurant with could be somebody that brings you significant work long down the future. Um, You know, it's, uh, it, these opportunities eventually can come from anywhere. But I think, you know, the most important thing is show work. I show work that I'm proud of. So as you'll notice, like on my website, I don't have a ton of commercial work because I find that that commercial work is so like isolated in its significance to that client. Um, So I like, I prefer to focus on the work that I've created editorially um, that um, has a broader significance, I think. Um, I don't know if I answered your question properly there, but um, I think I, I think that um, it's important to remember that it's a constant build, you know. And I'm in my mid 30s now, and um, I've got a body of work that I feel good about, but I also am constantly trying to achieve more and additional, um, you know, great images. Yeah. Yeah. No, you you answered the question. It, you know, I I often ask that question of our guests 
because I always get a different response because everyone has a different story. And as long as a little part of that story resonates with our students and our viewers, you've answered the question. Um, so, you know, we began our conversation today talking about how you're living between LA and Penland, North Carolina. Um, so looking towards the future for you, um, you know, I don't know how much time you're spending in, be, you know, in between, you know, the East Coast and the West Coast, but um, what are you excited about? You know, where, where do you see yourself creatively uh, over the next, uh, I don't know, the next year or two, uh, especially with the influence Absolutely. of this new geography? Yeah, so I, I I definitely hope to maintain my relationship with Los Angeles. I still have my place. I still have a studio out there, um, and I still have clients that I work with um, all the time. And I want to make sure that that relationship stays alive. So in the past year, I've gone back I think five or six times for for shoots, um, and then I'm I quickly have to get back to Penland um, because uh, my partner is. Um, we're in a new place, and uh, we're expecting uh, a, a young child um, soon. So yes. I gotta be back here. Yeah, it's the most exciting thing in my life. Um, Congratulations! I'm so grateful for it. Thank you, thank you. Um, but you know, uh, so Penland is like it's a it's a new locale that is definitely encouraging me to like think outside some boxes that I've been in unwittingly. Um, for example, last night, um, you know. I finished some responsibilities and it was 5.30 and the sun was setting and it was so beautiful and the clouds were rolling through the sky. So I went and photographed clouds um, for a series that I plan on printing large, maybe 40 by 60 sort of size. I, I made some, some work that I'm really proud of. Um, and it was, you know, shooting through some materials that, like I said, kind of thickened the images to me in my mind. Um, I wish I could live share one of those photos right now, but I'm still processing them. Um, but I'll, I'll, oh. I'll shoot you one of those, Vincent, just um, to let you know that I wasn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we believe you, Miles. <laughs> we, we believe you, but I, I gotta be honest, you lost me at baby. I asked what's, what's new, what's, oh. what's happening next. You're gonna be a dad, so. That is probably dog. the most creative challenge. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's going to open up a whole new body of work that most people, most of my friends will probably unfollow me on Instagram because they'll just be baby picture after baby picture after baby picture. A baby photographer. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I look forward to meeting my new subject, my new lifelong uh, subject. <laughs> lifelong, exactly. Possibly yeah. your muse, so... Yeah, that's really wonderful. But you know, to circle back on some new opportunities here, you know, the commercial work isn't um, necessarily up in these mountains. Um, there are some nearby cities that I look forward to creating relationships in: um, Richmond, yeah. Atlanta, Charlotte. Um, I do look forward to kind of opening up into the, those markets. Um, but I think personal work um, in this in this mountain landscape that I'm in this idyllic paradise frankly um i think um you know also like the difference in climate between here and la um yeah. is like yeah. I, something i'm really embracing so um yeah yeah i'm excited well you know I, Atlanta, my, eyes, my eyes are wide open yeah atlanta could be a really great opportunity for you you're not that far away from atlanta and with the movie industry booming as much as it is, even as now, you know, as we're kind of getting out of COVID, and uh, I mean, there are there are movie signs. When I drive around the city, there are movie signs everywhere, all over Atlanta. So that might be a great opportunity for you, considering the caliber of celebrities coming through and living in Atlanta because they're filming a new movie. Um, who knows? And you're just you're you're close to Asheville. Uh, this is a whole new geography. I mean, you know, I'm from I'm from the East Coast. I've lived in Rochester. I've lived in Miami. Okay, so when I go to the West Coast, it's so different. It just looks different. I know the same must hold true for you. You know, moving you know back to the East Coast. So I think the opportunities are going to be really great and just open 
uh, for you artistically and creatively. I'm really I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I, I thank you. I just explored, um, I've been to Charlotte quite a bit. I just explored Atlanta for the first time. I'm in love with this city. Um, and I also do think like, I mean, I've, I've worked with Netflix. I would love to be working with Amazon out there. I'd love to be working with Hulu out there. I'd love to be working with Apple out there. They're all on productions in Atlanta right yeah. now. Um, a, cousin, a cousin of mine is in movies and he's about to be filming there. So I'm definitely going to come back to visit him and hopefully have a set visit. Um, but yeah, I really do look forward to opening up those doors in Atlanta in particular. And then Richmond yeah. also has um, some incredible ad agencies. Martin, uh, the Martin agency is in yeah. Richmond. I've worked with them quite a bit. Um, so I look forward to keeping that relationship alive. Yeah. Well, Miles, this is exciting. Let us know if you're, th if you're coming through Atlanta. All right. Absolutely. And, I will indeed. And once again, just congratulations in advance. I'm so excited to meet, uh, li is it little miles? I mean, uh, do you know the gender? You know, that's funny. You <laughs> that a surprise? I'm the, th I'm the third. So it's either we go to the fourth or we go back to one. And I think we're just going to start uh -huh. fresh. And um, we have a couple of ideas in the mix, um, but we're not saying them out loud yet. So soon enough. All right. Well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll for sure reach out and let you know. You let us know. Well, is it Miles Standish Pentengill the <laughs> third? That's, That's you. That's it. All right. That's it. It's a mouthful. And it's a mouthful. Miles. Thank you so much for joining us on AI Live today. It's been a real treat uh, chatting with you. Likewise, Vincent. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. I'm your host, Eve Vincent Martinez. You know, there's so much to watch right here at AILive.AII.edu. It's jam-packed with interviews with industry leaders, panel discussions, school events, and much, much more. Plus, you get to interact live with our guests in the Q&A sessions in our premier events. There are current shows, or you can delve into our archive for some interesting industry information that you may have missed in our AI Live Rewind series. So join us every week as we showcase talented professionals in your industry, creating an immersive experience and a look into your field of study. Hey, school was never this much fun. Get engaged. We're AI Live. Come check us out.